Hello, okay, so in this video, I'm going to be focusing on how you can actually inject content onto a page using a Chrome extension. Now we're gonna look at a number of ways you can do this. The first is using a content script, which is basically um, a part of your manifest file that you set up that says, if you're on this page, inject this JavaScript file or this CSS file. There's also another technique you can use, which comes from your background page or service worker if you're using manifest version three. Now what this will basically do is in your background page, it listens for when the uh, URL changes and then can inject a script directly from the background page without you having to have this in your manifest file. So we're gonna go through all of these examples and then I'll also explain how you can use the shadow route to avoid CSS conflicts between your injected element and the actual elements and CSS that's already on the page. Just before I get started, um, at the end of this video, I'm gonna let you know about my new Chrome Extension Academy, which I'm currently working on. So if this sounds interesting to you, take a look at the end of the video and you can find out more information. Okay, so the first example we're going to use is for manifest version two and using a content script. So here's the manifest file here. I've kept it really simple. So I've only included the actual parts that we need for this example we're showing here. So again, we have our name, we have our description of our version, but the main thing we're looking at here is our content script. So what this will do is on any URL, if you have that permission, I've got a separate video on onboarding and permissions, um, which I'll link to in the description. But assuming that you do have permission to actually access this URL, it's going to inject this script just here when the page is loaded. So then if we open our content script, you can see that all we have is a function here called init and all we're doing is running it straight down here. But what this function does is it creates an element here, we give it a class name, we give it some inner HTML, and then we just append it onto the page. So I'll show you straight away how this works. So here is the examples I'm gonna show. So we've got the uh, content script examples, and then we have the background page or service worker examples from version two and version three. So we'll just enable this one just here, go to Google, and you can see that there is the element appearing down here. So we have hello from the Rusty Zone element right at the bottom of the page. So we're just appending this to the very end of the site. You can see just there. And then you can actually style this and add any you know, customizations that you'd want. You can add a CSS file in the same way. So if we had in our manifest over here, if we had another part of this object that said CSS, and we called it say content script.css and we save that. We created this file and say we attach this to this element just here. So if we went over to our CSS for that element and just let's say we had a, a thick border like that. And if we go over here and refresh, go back to Google down here you can see that that's adding it as well. So you can have your CSS um, separate like this. Now as I mentioned later in the video I'll show you how you can use a shadow route to actually avoid conflicts. For example if Google was using the same class that we used there, so the, um, what was the one we used? Yeah the Rusty Zone element, if they were already using that on the page and they had their own styling that can cause conflicts. But if you use a shadow route you can avoid that. But anyway we'll save that till later on in the video. So the next example I want to show you is for this exact same um, flow, but instead using manifest version three rather than the Chrome manifest version two. So we'll just switch off this one and then use this one here. So if we go to the code, so here you can see it's slightly different. So in manifest version three, we still have our content script here, which is exactly the same, but instead we have host permissions um, because the way that you can actually access the permissions for this has changed slightly, but in terms of the actual content script, it's exactly the same. Now, as I mentioned for onboarding and permissions, I've got a separate video about this linked in the description, which also looks at version two and version three. But other than that, it works exactly the same way. So if we were to go back to Google there, you can see the elements appearing on the page. And if we did the same change to bring CSS, that would work as well. So now we're gonna look at how you can pull in and inject these scripts using your background page, or if it's version three, your service worker. So to do this, as you can see, I've got other examples here. So if we first look at version two and then change our code again. Okay, so here 
is a manifest for injecting the uh, our script, so exactly the same script, but using our background page. So here's our manifest. We have a background page here that's called background.js, so it's a background script rather than a background page, but that doesn't really matter here. Um, we have permissions. Um, we don't need all of these permissions, but just to save time, I've put them in there. And if we look at our background page, what this is doing is it's saying um, Chrome tabs on updated. So when the tab changes or the URL changes, execute this script. So it's basically going to find this file and add it into the page. So the actual content script is exactly the same, but the effect is slightly different. So if we go to a page now, so if we go back over here, make sure this one's on to Google, you can see the element has been added. Um, what you'll notice there, if I refresh, it disappears. So because of the way this, this works, it changes it slightly. But if we were to adjust this, so what this means is that it's an actual, the URL has changed. If we change this to change info status equals complete, for example, like that, and then refresh this and open Google now, there's our element. And if we refresh, you can see it's still adding the element. Now, I'd recommend you tweak this a bit to look at um, exactly what you need for your extension. Um, but you can see here we have the tab ID, the tab and the change info. Now in version three, this has changed a little bit because um, it's not Chrome tabs execute script, it's Chrome scripting, which I'll show in a minute. But for that, you sometimes need to pass in the actual tab ID that you want to inject this code into. But as a quick example, here's how you, here is how you can inject your code using your background page rather than having to have it in your manifest. So you can change things around programmatically rather than having it all in your manifest at the start. Okay, so the next example is using a background page, or in this case, a service worker for manifest version three. So again, things have changed here even more. So we have our host permissions again, similar to the last version three example um, with all URLs. So we can inject this anywhere, as I mentioned, if you want to see about more about permissions and onboarding, I have a video on that. Um, but here we need the scripting permission to be able to actually run this. And then we just have our service worker. So if we look at our background page, you can see we do the same thing again here. So as we mentioned, we've taken out the URL and made it beyond complete. So that it works even if you refresh. Um, and then here we're using a tab ID. So as you can see, we have the tab ID up here, or you can grab it from the tab um, part just here. It's exactly the same. It just depends on the way you want to run it. Um, and then we inject our content script. Now, one thing I didn't mention for version two um, that you'd also need to do if you're changing it to use the change info status equals complete is that we need to make sure that we're not running this code twice on the page. So that could sometimes change if you have a um, so you have a, a hash link that just scrolls up the page or you have multiple links that just scroll to certain elements on that same page, that can cause this um, on tabs, Chrome tabs on updated event listener to run. So because we've changed it to this so that it runs when you refresh the page, we have to add this extra check over here to make sure we're not duplicating the times that we run this code. So that's just a simple thing to add just to check in here but otherwise it works in exactly the same way. So if I was to go over here and enable this one, not this one, this one, we can see we have our service worker here. So now we have Google opened and if we scroll down, you can see the element just here. So as I mentioned, if you wanna avoid CSS conflicts, you can use the shadow route to actually create your own, um, sort of like a sandbox mode on the page that CSS can't get through to it. So I've actually made a separate video on this, but I'll show you now just to give you an overview of how this works. So if you add an element here, so I made this element earlier. So to give you an example, here is some code that we can add into this extension here. that will actually add a new shadow root area onto this page. Now the way it works, we basically have to have a separate element just here. So as you can see, we have our standard inject element that we were using up until recently. So it's exactly the same. And then all we've done is we've created a host element down here. Now this inner HTML won't ever be seen, but it's basically a container for our shadow root to be attached onto. Now you can attach this by using the, um, the query selector. So we have the CSS, we have the class name just here. So you can see that matches up with this element just here. And then all we do is we attach a shadow. So this is basically a, a part of the page, as we mentioned, which allows you to inject code that will appear normally on the page 
but the CSS can't filter through to the actual elements in t inside the shadow root, if that makes sense. Um, so then what we're doing is we're creating a new element just here, so a new div, and then we're injecting our inner HTML directly into here. Now, as you can see here, I've got this as just a long string, but if you wanted to, you could adjust it like this. So you could have things on multiple lines and just keeps it a little bit uh, easier to, to write this out. If I just fix, fix that. Um, so that can help a little bit just with the, the new strings. Um, but again, that doesn't really matter right now. Let's just switch back to what we had a minute ago. So if we were to save this and update our page now, what you will notice is we'll see a new element underneath our existing element just here with this styling around it. So if we inspect this, what you'll see is we have a shadow root. So this is, as we mentioned, we've attached that to this element just here. Now there's styling inside here, which adds this border. So if you look at our code again, we have this styling tag just here, which is great. So that's how we can add this element just here. But as you can see, if I was to change this, so if I change this color, for example, that changes the color down there. But to show you how this works with conflicts, say I added a piece of uh, styling up here that was to say border color, um, she's one of these, aqua, and put important. You can see it's making no impact on this at all because this um, styling is on the actual um, parent part of the page. Um, but if I had this element over here, say I added this styling to the parent of that, like this, and we actually said border width three pixels, border style solid. You can see it is actually applied to the page, but it's not filtering through. Um, but if we were to actually take this CSS here and apply it directly onto this element, it would actually change. You can see that it's changed but that has to be directly on the element. So if we added this, this code here inside of our shadow root, then it would have worked. So if we were to remove this, you can see it's only appearing appear just there. But if we adjust our code here inside of our shadow root, let me just change that. You can see it's working. But basically, all it means is CSS that's already on the page won't be affecting your elements that you want to add if you use a shadow root. If you've got any questions on that, just let me know because it can be a bit um, confusing when you're first working with shadow roots because they are quite strange. But that's why sometimes um, you know sites like Facebook use these shadow roots as well, where you can be looking for an element. So even if I was using, say, query selector, and this was a element inside a shadow root, it wouldn't be able to find it on the page. So you would have to actually grab the root of the shadow root first, and then you can run query selector on those elements as well. But it's just something to look out for. Say I wanted to access this element, I'd have to first grab the, uh, the root here. So if we were to say, so this was a quick example. So there is the element just here, and then we can access the shadow root just there. So there's the shadow root, and then we can run query selector on the elements inside. So then if I wanted to um, add a click event, for example, I could do that from here. So you need to make sure that you're accessing first the, the holder element of the shadow root, then you access the shadow root element inside of that, and then you can run query selectors as normal. But if I was to just try and um, run this like this, and then try and access the div inside, it would be as if it wasn't on the page. Even though if you were looking at the elements, it looks like this element has a div inside of it, but it actually isn't there. It's inside the shadow root. So if you access the shadow root first, then you can get to that element. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you want to see the code for this, I've added a link in the description to all of the different versions of this. So for the content script on version two and version three, and the background page on version two and version three. The code for using the background page on version three has the shadow root um, adjustments. So if you wanna see that, you can see a link in the description to all of that code as well. Okay, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions on anything we covered in this video, just let me know. But also, I just wanna say a quick word about my new Chrome Extension Academy, which I'm currently working on and um, recording the first videos for the course section of this. 
And there's also going to be another section that's focused around actually helping you work out where your idea is and how you can actually turn this into a real extension, um, including calls and a, a natural group and community around building extensions. If this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, um, you can send me an email for more information because I'm currently um, putting this together at the moment, um, hopefully to be uh, launching this for the first uh, batch of the actual live part of the course in the next couple of months. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, you can email me for more information and secure a place uh, when we actually launch the, the live part of this course. 